Hello everybody, my name is Zeke, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite books from the decade so far. Now, when I say that, I don't mean just out of the books I've read in the past four and a half years, what are my favorite? I'm specifically talking about books that have come out in the past few years that I've read and enjoyed. And I'm making this video for two reasons. First of all, because I do want to reflect on kind of newer books and what I think about them and, and kind of share some of my favorites. But also while making this list, it's really made me confront the fact that I just don't read enough newer books. I don't think I necessarily read a lot of super old books either, but I really don't make it a point to keep up with newer releases and I want to do more of that. So I'm gonna share this list and there are definitely a lot of great books on here, but I feel like I've also missed out on a lot of really big ones. And so after this, I'll probably do a follow-up video where I go through a bunch of books that have come out since early 2020 and pick a bunch that I want to put on my TBR and prioritize for the future. So for this video, I have seven books picked out. It's actually not all like my five stars from the past few years. I'm trying to, I don't know, I think my rating system has kind of changed in the past few years. So instead of just going back and looking at everything I've given five stars and calling those my favorites, I've really tried to pick out the things that have stuck with me the most and that maybe would be five stars now if I went back and read them, uh, which is a whole other topic, rating systems, how they work, if they're worth it. But for now, um, I'm just going to talk about these seven books and I chose them all for a specific reason. Like I have actual things to say about them. So I hope you enjoy and get something out of this and maybe find some new books that you want to read. So the first one I'm going to talk about, I actually read pretty recently and that's The Guest by Emma Klein. Um, this is a book that a lot of people really don't like and that's because it is basically plotless. Um, we're following a woman, she's moving it's like the end, it's during the summer, she's moving out of New York City, she's kind of running away from um, something bad that happened, and she goes to live with this wealthy man in this house until very early on in this book, she gets kicked out, and she's kind of just in this um, vacation land, like super wealthy homes all around, um, very wealthy people, and she's kind of just roaming around and getting into troubling situations with different people. The whole story is basically a distorted version of a hero's journey. She is leaving home, aka this wealthy man's house, and she has a set date that she's planning to return. So it really kind of takes that um, very classic story structure and turns it on its head, very similar to one of my favorite short stories of all time, The Swimmer. Um, so that's part of the reason I really liked it. But um, as I said, this book really is plotless. I mean, we have this like one goal in mind, but there's not a lot of actual action going on. Um, the character is very unlikable. She's meeting all these people who are also pretty unlikable, but she's also kind of ruining people's lives just because that's just how she's working in this world. And it is really, it's a train wreck from the beginning to the end. And I think it's kind of really fun to read in my opinion even though it is kind of low action and even though this character is very unlikable I think she's a very interesting character and so I was really able to appreciate that and also it just reminded me so much of The Swimmer which I love so much that um, it's really just everything I wanted from it and I really didn't have many expectations going in. The one thing I will say is the ending and I think I say this every time I mention the book is definitely not for everyone. I think that pisses off a lot of people because um, it's not a satisfying ending, I'll say that much, but personally I thought it worked very well for the rest of the book and that's why it's definitely one of my favorites that I've read this year and one of my favorite books I've read out read that have come out in the past few years, so very glad I read that. And definitely kind of a newfound, unexpected kind of favorite, and I think I officially rated it like a 4.5 for but definitely the more I think about it, it's probably more of a 5 for me personally. Next, I'm going to talk about Monstrilio by Gerardo Samano Cordova. Um, this is a book that I went in knowing that I was going to love because, and you can tell because I have it in a hardcover and I never buy hardcover books because it's just rarely worth it. But I saw this cover, beautiful. I saw people talking about it. I was really hooked. And I will say like the when I read it the first time, or I've only read it once, but when I read it, I was not disappointed, but it wasn't exactly everything I wanted. But then the more I reflect on it, I did really enjoy it. And I did get a lot out of it and it has certainly stuck with me. So I think that is the sign of a good book. Um, and I definitely wanna reread this at one point to see kind of how my opinions have changed. But all of that aside, this book, we follow a mother whose um, 
baby child has died and so she cuts out a piece of I think it's his liver I could be wrong some organ and it basically grows into this monster um, who has similar traits to her son but also is kind of becoming its own being um, wrecking havoc on the world around it but it's kind of this dichotomy between um, this mo literal monster that is grown out of this organ and the remnants of her son and so it's as you may be able to tell a book that deals a lot with grief and loss and kind of the idea of moving on or not moving on um, obviously it talks a lot about love it talks a lot about family we have all these side characters that play a big role in Monstrelio's life and in the mother's life and they kind of come together around this new situation that they have to handle and there's a lot of chaos that ensues but at the same time it is kind of a quieter book I don't think that there's it's like I think build a little bit as a horror book and there's definitely disturbing elements but it's not like real outright scary I would say it's more disturbing and unsettling at points but I think the writing is beautiful I think kind of the premise is just, it, it promises a lot and I really do think it delivers. I think that the way it uses that premise as a vehicle for its themes works very well. And I think going in, you kind of have this idea of what the story is kind of gonna be about based on the premise. And I think it does cover a lot of that, but I think it just does it in a way that is at times surprising and definitely engaging throughout. And so I definitely highly recommend this. And I'm not someone who reads like a lot of horror. And once again, I don't really think this is really horror, but I would definitely recommend this even if you don't read like books like this because it's very, very good and very, very different. Next, another weird kind of horror-ish, but not really book is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Uh, this is a book that is kind of hard to describe why I like it. I think it has a lot to do with the ambiguity and kind of the surreal nature of a lot of what happens in this book. We're following this couple and we go back and forth between their perspectives, but really we're mainly in one of their perspectives. And one of the two wives went under the sea on this kind of expedition and the other stayed behind. And when the wife returns from under the sea, things are very off and we're kind of just plopped into this world. We're not given a lot of explanation. There's not really any explanation throughout, but we get like little glimpses at what happened under the sea, but we never get any confirmation, any like satisfying um, answers to what's going on. But we're just following this relationship and we're following it to the, I think, very beautiful conclusion um, unsettling conclusion that I don't want to give too much away about. I feel like it's hard to talk about this book without giving too much away because this is another book where there's not a lot happening. We are very skewed towards like the present day um, learning about what's happened after she's come back and we don't get a lot of that underwater time which is what would be like the actual action. We really just don't get a lot of that and so it is a slower book. Um, it is really about the atmosphere and the writing and exploring the relationship between these two characters. But I think that's what I really appreciated about it. And I appreciated that it was able to, it felt comfortable taking its time and not focusing so much on what could be a very like cool, interesting, action heavy plot and really just taking a different route and focusing on these characters. And there's just something very mesmerizing about reading this book. I think it's hard to explain and it, it it's something you just have to read and I think some people really hate it and some people really like it but if you like kind of more ambiguous slower surreal horror-ish stuff this is definitely maybe gonna work for you I don't want to say definitely but uh, I really enjoyed this and I'm very glad I read this because this is definitely another thing I don't usually read and I'm glad I picked it up. Next, I have a book called Notes on an Execution by Danya Kitkovka. This book is very different from, I think, everything I've talked about so far. Um, this, we're following a serial killer on death row. He's about to be executed, and that's kind of the jumping off point. That's the perspective that kind of follows us throughout, but we also get some other perspectives of women who played a big part in his life. Um, we get his mother, we get the detective that's kind of on the case, um, we get his sister. And it's really, I mean, it's his story, but it's not 
his story. There, It's told through mainly the perspectives of these three women and um, how their lives were shaped by him, but also how he shaped their lives. And it's a very complicated narrative. There's a lot going on with all these moving parts and all these different perspectives. And that's what I like so much about it. I think the way the author is able to weave all these characters together is very just well structured and well put together. I don't think the writing necessarily is anything like amazing. I don't think the actual like story, like with the topics it's talking about are anything like groundbreaking. But I do think it's just so impressively executed where I was engaged every single page. I just, I wanted to know what was happening. I wanted to know more about this story, about the stories of these women. And I was just hooked. I was completely hooked. And I think it that in and of itself is something to really love about any book. But I also just think that it handled this topic very well. It is kind of, a, I wouldn't say subtle, but kind of subtle. Um, but definitely the point uh, in a lot of ways is critiquing like true crime. I got a lot of that and like this idea that there's a lot of obsession with these violent serial killers, these violent men, and how that is wrong, obviously, for a lot of reasons. But um, this book just kind of shares a very different perspective on that through these women that are the main focus in a lot of ways of the novel. And so I really enjoyed reading this. I think this is also a very accessible book. I think a lot of people will really enjoy reading this, which I think is very good. I like it when I can recommend books that I think a lot of people will like. And I'm glad I read this because this is something I, once again, like wouldn't really pick up. I don't know if the description I gave really gave it justice because I think this is another one you just have to read and like you'll kind of see how um, well organized and well executed everything is. But I really appreciated it and I'm glad I read it, obviously, because it ended up in this video. The next one I'm not going to give a ton of plot description on because it is technically like the ninth book in a series and that's Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie. Um, this is the ninth book, kind of maybe tenth, in the First Law world, which is this epic fantasy series slash group of series that Joe Abercrombie has written. Um, and this is part of like the second trilogy in this series, so a lot of confusing things going on there. Um, but this, I remember when this came out, like I, I think I got it on Kindle like right after it came out and I was so excited to read it. And then it was just like, I had no time to read it. And then all of a sudden there was one day where it was like the weekend and I had so much time. I just read most of it in one day and was absolutely hooked. Um, this is a very dark world. We are following bad people. And throughout the second trilogy, we're following kind of the second generation of people from the first trilogy. So it's really just fun throughout to see all these characters we know and don't know interact. And I think that kind of reaches its maximum level of um, just fun in this book. I mean, I, it's hard for me to call this book fun because it's really dark and there's a lot of violence. In this book, we don't just see like the subtle hints and, and build up from the first two books in the trilogy kind of come to a head. We see so much from the rest of like the other six books in this world just all reach this one huge climax that is very unexpected. And I know I'm being very vague, but once again, ninth-ish book in a series. Um, but I think just the character work, as in all of Abercrombie's book, is some some of the best here. And I also just think sometimes his plots are not necessarily his strong point, I think especially in that first trilogy, but I think the plot in the second trilogy, um, the way it kind of was executed by the end was phenomenal and very unexpected for a Joe Abercrombie book, in my opinion, because I once again don't feel like story is necessarily his like main strength. But this was just basically everything I ever wanted from a fantasy book, Joe Abercrombie book, and um, definitely something I still think about. I think about the experience of reading it because it's just wild and there's so many unexpected things that happen. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that's gonna kind of influence anybody to pick it up because once again, ninth-ish book in a series, but I would definitely recommend looking into Joe Abercrombie's work if you're interested in fantasy and kind of 
darker fantasy stuff because it's very, very, very good. Switching it up a lot, next I'm gonna talk about Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. Um, this is by the lead singer of a band I love called Japanese Breakfast, and that is why I eventually picked it up. I picked it up, like, I think it came out two years before I picked it up, and for some reason it just took me a while to get to because I don't read a lot of memoirs, um, but I'm so glad I finally did. This book is heartbreaking. It's about Michelle's honors um, losing her mother, and so she focuses a lot on her life growing up with her mother, um, how they bond over food, and um, how her mother has kind of just influenced her in so many ways, but also she's had kind of a complicated relationship with her. Um, but then she kind of has to go and live with her mother and care for her mother while she is dying. And so um, she's, it's a very reflective book. She's reflecting on this life, this relationship, and it's beautifully written. And I think because I've gotten so much out of her music, just getting this kind of complete other side of her and also, in a lot of ways, her music is very tied to this experience as well. She has a whole album um, that she kind of wrote while wow, slash right after her mother passed away. And there are like references to things that are mentioned in this book in that music. So it was just a really powerful experience, a reading experience for me. And I think even if you don't listen to her music, I think this memoir is just so raw and so intimate and she really doesn't hold back and I think it gives you a very very personal look at this heartbreaking situation. Once again don't read a lot of memoirs but I do think that this is anything everything I would ever want for a memoir because of how personal it is and because of how kind of thoughtful and reflective it is and so obviously I wouldn't recommend this to everyone because it is a topic that not everyone's going to want to read about but uh, if this sounds like you would be interested in it, I think you will definitely enjoy it. The last book I'm going to talk about is something I desperately, desperately need to reread, um, which I say very often, um, but that's Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This book, another one that's very difficult to explain. We're following Piranesi, who lives in this kind of labyrinth thing. Um, he roams around, he has to like live here, he keeps diary entries of everything that he ever has seen or remembers or sometimes doesn't remember and he's kind of just talking to us we're learning about his world we're learning about the others that inhabit this world and it's very surreal it's very I think hard to get into at first because you have no idea what's going on but then we slowly kind of get thrust into this mystery that is not very high action. It's another kind of slower book. Until the end, there's some more action, but it is not really the focus. I think we get a lot of atmosphere in this book that is very oppressive, but also just unsettling and creepy and very fun to read. Um, I think that the way it's written really puts you in this character's head where, like, you don't know what's going on, but also the character doesn't always know what's going on, and it's, she just is really good at putting us in that headspace. I think it's narrated narrated in a way that I've never read before and I think even though it's been a while since I've read this and I don't remember a lot of the specific plot points other than kind of the main mystery like what ends up happening, um, I do think what has really stuck with me is this character, this voice that we're in and the absolutely incredible, mysterious, surreal atmosphere that Susanna Clark is able to build. I did absolutely love this fly through it when I read the first read it the first time, and I think a lot of people really love this because it is so beautiful to read and so unique and just so unlike really anything else out there that I've ever read. And so I highly, highly recommend this, and this is definitely something that I cherish and love dearly. So that's going to do it for this video. I'll definitely like five in five minutes come up with something that I forgot and then I'll be really mad but it is what it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning about my favorite books that I've read that have come out since the beginning of 2020. Um, maybe you've been introduced to something new. Honestly probably not because I feel like a lot of these books are pretty popular um, but yes this has definitely made me reflect on 
how many more books there are that have come out since 2020 that I really need to get on. Um, but at the same time, I am very happy with these books. Um, so if you did enjoy learning about these books, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.